Mini Shop screen capture software. Right, so welcome everyone to the group pool 14th. Uh, welcome Ken as well. So, um, right, dollar, hawkish skip or peak rates? Um, so tonight we've got FOMC and pretty much uh, the Fed are expected to pause and keep options open to raise rates in July. And the dot plot could give FOMC sentiment um, on additional hikes. So um, talking about, you know, the Fed dot plot, um, if you don't know what that is, it means uh, Federal Reserve policymakers for more than two years now have been steadily ratcheting up the so-called terminal rates, interest rates, sorry, where they see the benchmark rate popping out. Yeah. And so um, basically it's just a forecast. Dot plots is basically where they where the Fed are forecasting um uh in their their interest rates and they kind of do it on a uh i guess uh, it's kind of like dots <laughs> on, on on a graph I was, I was looking for a actual an example of it could but couldn't find one but um but basically um if the fed come out and pretty much say well they might hike one more time um then they'll factor that into uh their uh, their forecasts on interest rates which are basically known as dot plots so um basically it says um and if fed watchers are right there's at least one more ratcheting ratcheting up uh coming on wednesday uh with chair jerome power having signaled that the fed will refrain from raising rates at the two-day gathering all eyes are on officials updates policy um sorry all eyes will be on officials is updated Policy rate projections, as Steve Matthews reports there. So that's basically um, what's happening. And FOMC may project higher for longer rates as inflation persists. So the Fed forecast may show faster growth, less unemployment in 2023. So, um, so let's see uh, what happens here. Um, but yeah, I think um, overall... Um, you you know inflation measures today we had um ppi uh producer prices inflation and uh, month for month and that came out uh lower than expected why is you know why are we looking at this is really if you're the fed obviously um are trying to combat inflation and to combat inflation they need to hike rates and if inflation is seen as naturally coming down towards their two percent target then it means that they don't necessarily need to hike. So they also need, and I've mentioned this last week, is they need to kind of, you know, central banks might need to have a have a bit of a pause to see the effect of interest rates on the economy. Because interest rates lag, you know, you're not seeing, you might make a decision today about where inflation is, not knowing if in the next three months, the decision that you make today may may have an effect um in um you know the next two three four five six months and so it's it's almost like they they're uh they they um they're they're a bit well all central banks not just the federal reserve but they have to kind of guide inflation but be ahead of inflation and then basically just hope that inflation kind of comes down as a reaction later on to what they've done today in the next maybe three to six months if that makes any sense, it basically it lags. So the effect of their interest rates lag in the economy. And so um, any data that shows inflation coming down, which today it did, um, producer prices, and if you don't know what producer prices are, producer prices for final demand um, in the US uh, month of month following, uh, da, 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 where's, where's the explanation for it? Uh, it said, uh, um, to give the accurate uh the accurate um summary here it is so in the united states the producer price inflation uh, for final demand measures month over month changes in the price for commodities sold for personal consumption capital investment government and export it is composed uh, of six main price indexes final demand goods and so on and so forth but when we're talking about anything to do with prices prices are basically inflation so whenever you hear a measure or you see a measure measuring some sort of price. It's a measure, it, it could be taken as a measure of inflation. And it's written here anyway, it says uh, producer price inflation, right? So um, with that coming down, we'll, you're seeing actually, in fact, um, the Federal Reserve 
it looks like apparently uh, 98% that's gone up to 90%. Yes, I think earlier today it was like it was like 95, but pretty much it's a, it looks like a done deal. Um, but with July, July actually um, is around 61% for a 25 basis point hike and 0 0.7. This was actually, I think this was a, this was a lot higher. Uh, I say a lot higher, but this was a bit higher than um, uh, I think yesterday and the day before uh, that I'd noticed. I think with inflation measures coming down, the the need to hike by, for example, 50 basis points is probably, you know, a bit extreme. So I think the market now is pricing in still a potential hike at the next meeting. So the dollar could still be supported, um, especially if uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell uh, confirms that today if his, if his statement is actually quite hawkish. And so... Um, the data still does have to support the narrative. Remember that as well. Just because you have a hawkish central bank, if inflation is coming down, then um, and coming down naturally, you know, then um, you know the uh, the need for them to actually hike, um, they'll probably just remove that because actually central banks don't want to kind of tinker with interest rates unless they absolutely have to. Uh, Ken says, um, what? Uh, what don't see? I think he tries to be hawkish to save face uh, and use core CPI. Yeah, because core didn't core stay the same. Was core the only measure that kind of stayed the same? I think it was. Um, uh, but that you don't see him hiking again. Uh, put put the thoughts on Discord. Oh, okay, I must have uh, missed it. I haven't I haven't read it yet. But um, but yeah, that 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 is definitely a possible scenario, right? Where He's pretty much just jawboning because if he hasn't got, if again the next core inflation reading starts to tick down, right, and other and other measures of inflation still starts to to come down, then whatever he says today is just going to be whatever, right? He's not going to want to, um, he's not going to want to hike, but it depends to the obviously the degree of inflation falling, or again if it remains sticky, right? Because that's also another option. Um, it's going to be tough for him to be wrong twice. <laughs> yeah, well, um, <laughs> these central bankers seem to be getting it wrong all the time, mate. It, you know, Andrew Bailey, for example, Bank of England, he's been wrong about inflation, um, you know, and, and, and recessions. It's crazy how, how wrong these, these, uh, central bankers and economists have been, especially over the past, you know, like I said, past couple of months. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's where we are with the dollar. So it's really all about the speech and, and, and the dot plots. Um, you know, so keep an eye on the dots. Um, in terms of there should be, if you go to Bloomberg, I'm sure they will publish it at some point. I'm not too sure where. I mean, if you go to maybe the, actually it should be on here, shouldn't it? One second. Uh, where was it again? Um, historical one second is it on here no 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 uh I'm sure it was i'm sure they used to have the dot plots in here did anyone remember where to find the dot plots where they had the uh where they had oh right in front of me dot plot <laughs> grand blinds right so this is basically uh where they see um uh the in, uh, interest rates so it really just depends. They see obviously um, interest rates coming down, right? The, the the blue dots. But if they start to update uh, these dots to where you know the market interprets it as it being, you know, they 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 kind of um, either keep interest rates as they are for longer and not necessarily cut rates in the future, or if they you know pre pretty much um, project higher rates potentially, then that is going to, um, you know, uh, support the uh, the dollar. So, um, so da, 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 da. right, and uh, they've been uh, predicting higher inflation and we're not seeing that at the moment. Yeah, we're not seeing it at the moment. I was listening to something um, the other, um, say the other day, but earlier this morning, um, some analysis and the guy was saying that he thinks that the... Um, it was an independent um, researcher, and he was just saying that he thinks that the inflation is going to remain sticky. But 
let's see, right? Let's see. Um, who knows at the end of the day? Um, but what we do, what we can do is just, is we know how to react if inflation, you know, either goes lower or, you know, comes in sticky, right? If it comes in sticky, pretty much, you know, you want to probably look to potentially buy the dollar, depending on how sticky it is. If it comes in higher, then you're definitely looking to buy the dollar based off of just one more rate hike. But if it continues to go lower, then, and you're in, for example, uh, uh, a short dollar trade, and you know, let the let the data support your your trade, right? And give you confluence with your trade. So you can stay in a trade for as long as the data supports your trade, right? If the data doesn't support your trade, then you may want to either look to take some profit, you know, partial profits, maybe full profits, um, or maybe trail your stops, for example. Um, but either way, if you're in a you know a short dollar trade, then um no need to get out for now, right? Any supporting, you know, uh, data is uh, is great for your trade if you are um, short on the dollars at the moment. ECB, moving over to the ECB. So the ECB inches nearer to to the interest rate summit, and it says with the zero, sorry, with the eurozone economy faltering, policymakers should signal a pause in rates is imminent. And I've been talking about this for the past, um, you know, couple of uh, weeks, especially what's well, a couple of weeks, but Actually, yeah, last past couple of weeks, but last week we had a confirmed recession, right? Because I was seeing the data, um, the economic data wasn't coming out great for the euro. And then there was a confirmed recession. But it looks like the market has pretty much looked past the recession when it comes to the euro um, for now and uh, more focusing on uh, the rate hikes. But as I spoke about last week and, um, you know, in previous weeks, and I'll say it again, is that the central bank typically you know it's not advised that a central bank hike into a a recession because you're just going to make the recession worse right if because because the higher the interest rate goes you have you know uh, it contracts the economy because you raise borrowing and lending costs and so you know i was talking today about the the, the lag effect of higher interest rates right so when the fed hike interest rates or any central bank hikes interest rates today they they're going they might see the effect of that two three four five six months down the line right nobody knows really the time lag so actually in fact sorry not to not to um kind of go off off topic but today i put something in here which was actually quite interesting um Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. See if I can find it. It was to do with here. We here it is. Here it was. Right. So this was from uh, MUFG, and they were saying this is just illustrates the point. Yeah, about interest rates um, not finding their way into the economy immediately. So this paragraph here it says indeed it is the housing market where we are likely to see an increasing. Uh, like to see increasing stress as past monetary tightening feeds into the economy. Remember, according to the Bank of England, as of May, prior to the last hike of 415 basis points of tightening at that stage, only 71 basis points had actually hit the housing market. Yeah. And so, you know, the effect of borrowing and lending in the economy, they calculated that, you know, Pretty much, what's that? You know, not even, uh, I don't know, like just uh, maybe about 15, you know, 16% of, you know, of, of the hikes have actually hit the um, the housing market, right? And so that is what I'm talking about in terms of, in terms of lags and the effect that rate, you know, their, their decisions have on the economy um, in the future. And so going back to here, um, you know, there, there could be potentially tomorrow, you know, we're all focused on the dollar. But if the if Europe come out and pretty much say, well, you know, we're not looking to hike rates as much or, you know, maybe one might be taken off the table or they're going to be, you know, they signal maybe a dovish hike, for example, then the euro is likely to actually um, uh, devalue, right? 
And so um, it says the European Central Bank will almost certainly implement the eighth successive uh, increase in its final, sorry, in, in its official deposit rate on Thursday tomorrow, this time by 25 basis points to 3.5%. The interesting bit will be whether it signals it might be ready to at least start thinking about thinking about a pause, which is hilarious. But um, given a welcome downturn in inflation, recently and signs that the eurozone economy is flatlining at best yeah a hint that rate hikes are no longer automatic at every meeting would be prudent right so their priority yes is to is to get inflation down but to what you know detriment to what to what effect on the economy and so um again mr marcus ashworth you know, knows is um, economics 101, right? So if they were, if, the, if it was a strong economy, we would have, you know, it would be no no issue with um, the European Central Bank actually uh, hiking rates. But hiking into a recession, you might want to uh, to think twice about that. Uh, Ken says Q2 should be better and show, um, show them out of it. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Well, Let's see. Let's see. Because again, we don't know the effect of what the hikes now are doing in the economy. So let's say, for example, you know, the last two quarters have been obviously negative interest rates. And remember, since the first quarter data, yeah, they've been hiking interest rates into the second, you know, what I mean, the, the second um, uh, uh uh, reading of contraction, right? So I think it was the fourth quarter was negative. The first quarter was was negative. So during the second quarter, they were still hiking. So who knows whether that will actually stop uh, and continue to contract the economy, right? That's going to be um, the, the question, the effect of whether, you know, their, their hikes over the past three months have actually helped or hindered Um uh, the economy so um yeah let's see it let's see whether, whether whether that does happen um so another news the uk economy bounced back in april with gains for retailers so there was some positive news for the uk uh this morning and it said that the uk uh bounced back uh, in April, a strong growth in the retail and creative industry sectors offset a slowdown in construction and manufacturing. So some positive news for uh, the UK as a whole. That should keep the uh, the pound supported. The New Zealand dollar may have entered a recession sooner than the um, Reserve Bank of New Zealand expected. And so this has been, how you doing, Eagle? You're right. Um, this is this is this is a um, this is one that is a bit conflicting, right? Because you have, I think it was market consensus. I think I spoke about this. Um, where are we now? Countries, more country, New Zealand, and you've got GDP, right? So they they're at minus six and um. First quarter data actually is supposed to come in. I think um, trade and economics have revised their forecast, matter of fact, because I think they did have a positive number here. I think they had 0.1% the last time I looked at it. I think they revised it now down to 0 0.2, uh, minus, minus 0 0.2, minus 0.1. So the consensus and the trading economics forecast is actually for a recession, for a negative number. And so if they do have a negative number, then New Zealand are going to be in um, a recession. And so pretty much, you know, hiking into a recession, they've already paused, right? So they're not, they're not, they made it clear that they're not hiking. So for them to confirm a recession and then start to hike again, again, is not, it's not going to be great for them. So the New Zealand economy may have contracted for a second consecutive quarter, putting in, putting it into a recession sooner than central bank expected. And um, it says there was a wide margin of uncertainty around the quarterly result. Michael Gordon, senior economist at Westpac Banking Corp in Auckland. But the underlying picture is that the economy is cooling off as higher interest rates bite. You see, again, the lagging effect of interest rates on the economy. Yeah. 
Um, and so, yeah, let's see what happens with the New Zealand. And the New Zealand actually has been strengthening today, um, which is which is um, not surprising um, in currency land. Uh, if you look at, you know, for example, the New Zealand CAD, you look at like the the New Zealand um, Euro New Zealand, you're seeing this this drop now. I like these drops. Many of you know, some of you might know, I like these drops into levels because it's either one of two things is happening. Either one of two things is happening. Either the market knows that the New Zealand, you know, data is going to come out positive, right? And they're getting ahead of the curve, right? They're getting ahead of that, you know, because they've done their calculations, etc. But we know that is probably unlikely because consensus pretty much is for a negative reading right so pretty much all economists all economists but the consensus is pretty much saying you know minus 0 0.1 so is the market really getting ahead is the market really getting ahead of of and thinking that it's going to actually be a positive number could be could be a conspiracy right it could be giving us wrong numbers and trading against us that could be something um or the second alternative the second alternative is that the market is just clearing out all the stops below levels. That's it. There's a lot of liquidity below these levels in expectation for a recession. So the question you got to ask before, um, you know, uh, uh, an event like, you know, GDP is, is, um, is the fact that the, sorry, one second. Sorry, I was just a bit distracted. Sorry. Um, yeah, before before the news comes out is whether uh, the market is long and how many stops, you know, they're putting underneath here, right? Because the majority of people are expecting, the majority of the market are expecting, uh, you know, for that to happen, right? Especially when you think about the euro, right? The euro should be, you know, at least from a interest rate divergence perspective, you should have the euro strengthen against the New Zealand dollar. So what's causing the New Zealand dollar to, you know, go to the downside and, and the euro to weaken evil? The euro is, you know, they're expecting some dovish um, euro statement tomorrow or from a New Zealand dollar perspective, they're just clearing out a whole load of stocks that have been built up below certain structures before then going to the upside. Um, so it's it's uh it's that yeah trading against us that doesn't happen <laughs> yeah it doesn't happen it don't happen at all according to um you know some some uh some traders anyways on YouTube anyways um yeah so one of the two none of us know but what we do know is that if this if if the if the, they do go into a recession right then we have um, a decent buying opportunity, right? Depending on obviously the setup. Also as well, you do have, and many of you will know, an unfair auction that does need to be, you know, filled at least potentially partially. Um, could be filled before then. Um, doesn't have to necessarily be filled completely um, at, this, at this time, but we could have a partial, you know, completion of, um, of, of an unfair auction. And that is, you know, what could potentially happen there. And again, the data has to support the narrative, right? So um, let's see what happens there. But the New Zealand dollar is expected, is expected by all measures to go into a recession. So why buy the New Zealand dollar, right? Um, the Australian economy is at risk of a recession. As recession risks spike as RBA peak uh, rates seen at 4.35 and again, just this narrative then you know the education i guess behind it that the more you hike interest rates is the more your economy contracts and could potentially go into you know a recession right so as the rba continue to hike recession risks increase so economists see a chance of a downturn 50 percent up from 35 percent in may narrowing of yield suggests curves um yield curves suggest recession all but inevitable. By the way, I didn't know this, but the um, the Australian economy, right, um, has avoided a recession for thirty two years. Crazy, isn't it? 
All right. They, I think so outside of the first half of 2020. So apart from COVID, they haven't had a recession in 32 years. That's crazy. Um, but um, but yeah, so again, the more that the um, the RBA raise rates and not just RBA, all central banks hike rates, the more they are seen. And in fact, it might seem to be seen as a negative thing. But in order to get inflation down, they actually need a recession. Right, they need the, the economy to contract to bring inflation down. So um, it's, it's crazy to think that central banks are actively um, uh, employing measures and hope that we can actually have what they call a soft landing, where you know we get a contraction but not necessarily into some or maybe a mild recession, but not into basically a deep recession. A deep recession would be considered a, a hard landing. So they're looking for a soft landing. But also as well, you have to understand that although we might be looking at the Australian dollar, you know, and thinking to ourselves, oh, they might be going into recession. The question is always who is in a recession first or who's likely to go into a recession first, who's in a recession now versus an economy that is, you know, um, not in a recession or is least likely to go into a recession. Right. So you have to always put that in perspective. Um, and so, and that's the reason why I'm really kind of a bit, I'm a bit, um, um, divided, I guess, on the euro, you know, because I know that obviously they're in a recession, technical recession, but also as well, um, it seems like, you know, the market is ignoring that, which is a bit, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a tough one to, um, to take in terms of, you know, understanding, you know, what you should know about, you know, economics 101, right? But the market just seems to I think be so focused on, you know, what's happening with the dollar, right? And inflation and the Fed, it seems like any weakness in the dollar is just going to benefit every other currency, right? So um, I think that's what's going on at the moment. Um, it says, I think if you're not buying Aussie, CAD or Euro, you're missing out. Yeah, I did say um, over the weekend, remember last week I did say I was kind of on the fence with the Australian dollar. But then on the weekend uh, video, I did say that, um, you know, just based off of the interest rate hikes and how hawkish the RBA are, yeah, the Australian dollar, you know, has to, has to be the buy, right? Has to be the buy. Same thing with the Canadian dollar, um, Euro dollar. Well, like I said, it's 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 a it's a bit of a strange one. Yeah, pound pound is um is a buy as well, but Euro dollar, I think, out of the out of the pound, the CAD pound and the CAD, I would definitely say, um. Pound the CAD and the Euro, I would say the Euro for me is probably the weaker out of those just based off of the fact that they're in a technical recession, right? <laughs> That's it. You know what I mean? Oh, believe me, I'm not missing it. I'm waiting for that. that I'm waiting for a pullback, you know what I mean? Especially on that, on that Canadian dollar. So um, I think that New Zealand dollar's pulled back to a really, that New Zealand CAD has pulled back to a really nice area. So if, if tonight the news comes out that, the they've gone into a recession, then that New Zealand CAD is a is a is a is a short is a short trade for sure. Um, I don't. It's outside. <laughs> I don't. You can hear the dog, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can see the dog. That's what was distracting me. I could kind of see um what was going on, but um, yeah, yeah. The dogs are yeah, they're gone now. Anyways, um, right. So Australia. Recession risk spikes as um, RBA peak rate seen. Yep. So the Australian dollar, although the headline suggests a bit of negative, you know, sentiment, when you compare it, which is one thing that we should always be doing is comparing the, um, you know, countries, the Australian dollar um, is probably one of the, is one of the better um, uh, pairs to trade. But also as well, keep an eye on China and, um, they are actually cutting rates to stimulate their economy. So um, I really would like to be, for me, to be really confident in buying the Australian dollar. And when I say confident, I just mean that, you know, for me to kind of put a, a bit more money onto any Aussie trades, I would definitely need to see um, the Australian dollar, or I would say China um, grow with you know and and uh, support the uh, the Australian dollar because they're basically the biggest trade partners right so china growing would help 
um, Australia massively in their economy. And so if you get that, then the chances of a recession in Australia are probably going to be slimmer and they're hiking, which then makes them a really, really good buy. So uh, they do have a slowing economy. Um, I did say last week that I do want to have, I want to see China really start to grow before I start putting, um, uh, increasing my position size on uh, the Australian, on the Australian dollar. Um, so Bank of Japan, so Wada uh, is likely to hold with bond market on his side for now. So this trade idea uh probably dead in the water for now or if it if if um if it does you know materialize it would have it would basically just surprise you know the whole market but there are things i'm going to talk about in a sec but ultimately ueda is dovish the weak pay uh, election risk ueda's dovish tone suggests no change and third of cold economists see parts of yield curve control move next month so basically two-thirds think that um, he's not going to um, implement any kind of yield curve control and so he's remaining dovish and one of the things I thought was interesting as well is that the carry trade right so yen carry traders cheer on Ueda's softly softly approach to Bank of Japan and so if you don't know what the carry trade is I will just read it for you right right here where carry traders basically take advantage of the difference in interest rates between two economies to borrow where the rate is low and invest where it is high. So the lower interest rate is Japan, they're borrowing yen and they're investing in higher yielding currencies like the um, you know, the dollar, the Australian dollar, the, the pound, for example. And what that does is that creates demand for the um for the for the uh carry right for the for the um for the higher uh bearing interest uh currency or just you know wherever they're borrowing to it doesn't have to go into currencies and go into anything else that yields um higher than what they're actually borrowing the money for and so the yen at the moment right is the only one right is negative the only negative yielding currency so why not borrow right at minus uh you know point one i'm not i'm not even sure whether they bought you can actually borrow it at, at, at minus one i mean they're back idea um uh but then you can put it into any of these currencies and so that's also what is helping the um the uh the yen to weaken right and it says low yields where is it oh uh, here we go there's low yields in Japan makes the makes the yen a pref a preferred funding source, said uh, Koishi Ueno, a senior economist uh, at NLI Research Institute at Tokyo. Along with Japan's trade deficits, demand for carry trades will limit any strength in the yen. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we are with uh with the yen so don't expect to buy the yen anytime soon right uh but also there's this goldman bumps up japan price forecast to widen gap with bank of japan and so goldman sachs pushed up its inflation projections for japan driving them further above the central bank's forecast and essentially ruling out, ruling out the possibility of price growth slowing beyond sorry below two percent in the coming months as policy makers forecast so what does that actually mean it means that in fact as inflation if goldman sachs is right about inflation right and inflation goes higher in japan it means that it puts pressure on ueda to adjust yield curve control so although he might be dovish right now if inflation starts to come up and his target of 2%, you know, it's further and further away as inflation goes higher, then this has to be implemented, which then they have to strengthen. It's going to strengthen the, the yen because they can't afford, because what is inflation really? Basically, inflation is a, is a devalued currency, right? So they have to implement measures to try to strengthen the currency. So this yield curve control is designed to weaken the currency so if they take that away then prices should appreciate back down to the two percent target so let's see what happens there right so we have a dovish ueda 
any inflation I think um, that comes in for the Japanese yen is going to um, put pressure. So here we go. So stark contrast. Uh, Goldman's uh, inflation view is much higher than the Bank of Japan's for this year. Look at Goldman Sachs. They think poor, in fact, is going to go up to 3.8%. And if they, they, they think you've got problems now, yeah, that's going to be um, uh, call CPI. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be um, problems for them. Anyways, uh, so there's that's that's uh, Japan governments. Uh, shunting dirty work on inflation to Bank of Canada, CIBC says. So economists argue pairing back spending would lessen rate pain and it's not too late to consider a fiscal policy cliff. And basically the Bank of Canada will have to keep rates for a higher for longer unless governments do more to dial back their spending. One of the country's largest commercial lenders warned. And so um, pretty much the Bank of Japan is likely to continue to hike rates. Um, it typically isn't a one and done um, unless they explicitly kind of say so. But um, I think I think to try to get inflation back down and inflation in Canada isn't actually that bad. It's actually quite low, uh, one of the lowest um, outside of like, you know, the Swiss franc and, um, and uh, Japan. But um, they definitely still double what their target is. So they still want to get it down to 2%. And if they can continue to hike as the economy supporting those rate rate hikes, then I think that's what they're going to do to get inflation back down to the, um, oh my Lord. Anyways, um, yeah, so there's that. Swiss franc news is hard to come by, um, quite rare really, but um, this is the latest news, 10th of June, Swiss national banks fight to tame inflation not yet done, central bank chief says, and um, it says we can't exclude a further tightening of monetary policy, I think he's jawboning, um, but central bank chief comments in interview with Sontag's Zeitung. So um, it says there's more work to be done to tame inflation in Switzerland, according to the chief's uh, country's chief central bank and there was something in here which i thought was was it interesting um yeah it says, it says basically this is a new phenomenon he said but we can't allow this to fight to stop us fighting inflation because then inflation would only accelerate even more and we would with a time lag have to raise rates even more uh jordan said everything speaks for fighting inflation as early as possible so even though you know they've they've come back in fact to their um you know, core inflation has actually come back to 1.9. You know, he's thinking that inflation might, you know, he needs to get inflation even lower than 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 what it is. So that's um that's interesting. But this is a this is definitely worth a read. I think I've put it in the um the Swiss bank channel. Yeah, I did put it in here. So it's in here as well. So definitely have a read if you can. And I think that is pretty much it covered everything yeah so they've got one more hike to come and he's and you know they're very hawkish which is um like i said it's typically is strange but if they think that they need to get inflation even lower then um then they're two percent and they're gonna hike then that's basically what they're looking to do so when it comes to the pairs what do we see um i don't think anything's really changed bias should be euro uh new zealand should be long um alexandros welcome 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 no 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 worries mate no worries it's life but um you know welcome back and um i hope you're doing all right so yeah euro new zealand long again this be confirmed later on um today uh with with a potential recession or not i think if the market if they don't go into a recession then the New Zealand dollar is definitely going to be a temporary uh, buy. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a... <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we don't have a dog now, but yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we had uh, something going on outside. But yes, so New Zealand dollar um, is is um, can be a, a temporary buy if it avoids a recession. Um did it come through that loud on your um, on your end, guys? Did the dogs come out that loud? Were they that loud? You heard them, really? Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't think they were that loud. 
I didn't think you could hear them. Um, maybe it's the sensitivity of the mic I'm using. So, um, yeah, so anyways, so the New Zealand dollar could be a potential buy simply because if they avoid a recession, that's going to be positive for the, um, for the New Zealand dollar if everyone is expecting, you know, them to go into a recession, right? And the consensus in the forecast is uh, forecasting a recession. So New Zealand, um, again, is probably a bit more on hold. I'm going to go with a recession. So my bias is still to go long um, Euro New Zealand, long pound New Zealand at levels that actually that pound New Zealand, there's a nice stop hunt setting up. Let me go to the uh, pound New Zealand. Here we are. Nice stop hunt setting up. So that's going to be driven by what happens um, today. Very nice. And we have New Zealand CAD again. My bias would be to the short side. Uh, Aussie, no, not Aussie, Swiss. Uh, CAD yen is a continued buy. Um, Aussie, New Zealand, a continued buy. Although, again, it's come up to a really nice area with some, if you're anticipating, in fact, some New Zealand strength, then yeah, that's actually a, a decent area to look for uh, some shorts. But uh, that could just be short lived if they go into a recession, because then you're probably going to see something like that. Um, Swiss yen, yep. New Zealand. Dollar, US dollar, again on the watch list. Depending on what happens with both currencies today and some, well, actually today, pound yen, yep, euro yen, yep. So nothing's really changed um, in terms of, um, you know, the buyers and the sells and looking at the divergences. So it's pretty much buying uh, the CAD pound. Um, the euro, you can, I can you can make an argument for buying the euro and selling the euro. Same thing with the dollar, you can make an argument for both. But the clear buyers, I think, are the Canadian dollar, the pound. Um, yeah, the Canadian dollar and the pound, I think, would be definitely the, the clearer buyers. Um, and the clearer sells at the moment would be the yen and the... Um, oh, my days, not again. One sec. Yeah. Next door. Um anyways, uh <laughs> anyways, uh yeah, so that's pretty much where we are. <laughs> Dog with the most fees. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Hilarious, Daniel. <laughs> um yeah, so so those are where we are in terms of uh, buyers and sells. The sells are pretty much the New Zealand dollar, um, out and out sells anyways. Um, the New Zealand dollar for now and the Japanese yen. So um, there was a question. There was a question I had uh, from somebody. <laughs> so the uh, question was highly on. I think I'll go at this today. Basically... Um, who was it again? Who who was it who uh, messaged me? Were they, are they in the room? Uh, was it was it was Harold? Yes. So Harold said to me, um, you know, question highly on. Do you know why the Swiss is stronger than the euro and the pound? And basically, I thought, hmm, scratching my head a little bit, and then I had a look at the charts. And um, one of the things I would say to everybody, just as a reminder, is always zoom out to the daily time frame chart. I know I say this all the time. But, you know, maybe some people don't um, aren't in the group as as, as often. Um, maybe missed the message. But um, if you go to, for example, the, was it the pound Swiss, right? So the pound Swiss, if you zoom out, it gives you perspective. So you could say, you know, would we really say that the the, the, the Swiss franc is, is strong against the pound? No. In fact, we're up at a level that would be considered actually um, expensive, historically for the for the british pound and cheap for the swiss franc if you obviously considering you know buying the swiss franc um and so you know the swiss franc being um you know expensive or, or falling or strengthening against the pound then made me think to myself well it can't be you know on a higher time frame it's got to be 
at the lower time frames to then you know uh that trader um i was thinking that they must have bought at the highs they must have bought somewhere around there because later in, in the conversation they were wondering why prices were doing something like this so what i would say is whenever you're taking a trade yeah is zoom out first and see where you are right see where you are in a bigger picture and then from there what you want to do is you want to draw your demand zones right draw your daily demand zones and then decide you know then you want then instinctively you should kind of know that this is going to be an absolute low this is an expensive area so any pullbacks into an area here should be um considered you know either fair value or you know more more of a cheaper area right and so try not to just stay on one you know chart 30 minute chart zoom in only have maybe around about 20 30 candles on your chart as well zoom out always zoom out to the daily so same thing with the um with the euro swiss euro swiss we've actually been in this auction for about what two three weeks now so we've you know talking about the swiss being strong against the euro when we consider how many days was that sorry uh, we've been between in this for the last 36 days right 36 trading days oh okay so it's been a while uh, the 10th of may since we've uh, been in this auction so um you know because we see a pullback for example on an hourly time frame or a 30 minute time frame today does that make the swiss franc you know strong against the um against the uh, the euro mm, well not really it's just the the natural you know progression of movement i guess of of price when we consider that's a bargain that's expensive so now we're pretty much down to fair value if anything we should be looking at this as you know if there's a setup somewhere around here as, an, as a nice buying opportunity for cheaper than buying up at you know potential highs so this is obviously the ultimate you know bargain or cheap price and um yeah just try not to not to get drawn into day setups where you're buying at daily highs or weekly highs and just zoom out that's what i would say um malcolm uh says can you look at new zealand swiss i can new zealand swiss right so looking at the daily so again where are we i'm always thinking about and i clear the, the analysis off right i'm always thinking about where are we in terms of um you know the auction where's price contained between you know obvious highs and uh obvious lows and so you know looking at where we are we can see that this is obvious high this is obvious low and price has been contained between that right and so where do you want to be a buyer um personally i'd rather be a buyer at a swiss franc over in new zealand but that could obviously again change because if the new zealand do avoid a recession then there's going to be some positivity around that new zealand dollar new zealand dollar has to be revalued etc so what again i my personal thoughts are that the market is just basically taking out a lot of stops above you know certain levels drawing traders to go long before the news comes out unless they're going to be wrong yet again because they have been wrong quite consistently these forecasts um when it comes to uh, where are we now where did, I, where, where did i put that uh that forecast oh it was new zealand yeah growth rate they have been quite wrong in these the consensus and the trading economics forecasts so um I wouldn't be surprised if it did come out positive, to be fair. But if I'm going with the consensus, I'd have to believe that, um, you know, the, the, the market is just taking out A stops and B drawing traders in to go long. Because by buying, if I want to be a seller, yeah, I need buy orders. So... If eventually I think that, you know, obviously prices should be down here within the next, you know, week or two or month or two. So I need, first of all, I, want to, I don't want to be buying at lows. Yeah, I want to buy at lows. I want to buy it at a better price. 
And secondly, if I need sell orders and to fill my book, then I need enough liquidity, which is the buy orders. And so what happens is that not only do I take out the stops below there, because if anyone who's gone short here, their stop loss order is a buy above the market. And then what happens is, is that as prices go beyond that, takes out the stops, it draws in more buyers because you've got breakout traders going long and everyone starts to, you know, say the trend is your friend and, you know, they start to buy now. But who's taking the other side and who's been able to buy it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper is the institutions. So they're on the, they're on the other side of these trades. Some people will make out with some profit, good for them, but ultimately all they're looking for is liquidity, you know what I mean? For them to buy in mass in anticipation of a recession and that should happen. This is what the plan should be, right? This is what we should know about, you know, the economy and how fundamentals work on price. Now, that's not 100% guaranteed, nobody knows, but that is what I think is happening. If it doesn't happen, oof, it would be... um. If there's a recession, let's say, for example, when prices still go higher, again, I'll just scratch my head on that one. There's got to be some some other detail that I'm probably missing. But um, but from a macro level, that's what should happen. Because, you know, when you look at, you know, other currencies and you, and you think to yourself, well, you know, fundamental wise, why did, for example, price go like this? Why has price gone like that over, you know, with the pound yen over the past, you know, three, four months? Why is that? Can anyone hazard a guess? Can anyone hazard a guess as to why we've seen this really nice trend on the pound dollar and um, pound yen? Oh, the trend is your is, is is your only friend. Yeah, that's what people believe. Um Bank divergence. Yeah, pretty much exactly. It's uh, bank divergence, right? Where you've got one central bank hiking rates, which is the Bank of England, and then you've got a central bank that is has been holding rates even though in that time there has been talk of potential you know yield curve control it never materialized and so you pretty much see in that happen whereas the bank of england has just had persistently high inflation you know more hikes are being priced in and you're just seeing something like this and so you know everything can be explained typically or usually with fundamentals um and hopefully, you know, the fundamentals do play out in the in the trades that we're in, right? But if it doesn't, what can we do? We just have to stick with the fundamentals and hopefully price does follow, um, you know, um, uh, value and um, and the like. Uh, yen, exactly. Yen not hiking yet. That's exactly it. They're the last central bank to actually hike, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, with, um, with the, uh, going, sorry, going back to the New Zealand Swiss, yeah, going back to New Zealand Swiss, I think. Let me just delete all this again. I would say, from a buying perspective, I think the only real way you're looking at a technical buy is if prices either come up to that supply zone there. I can't see anything else at the moment, not on a higher time frame, or unless you're going to go down to something like a five minute time frame or one minute and start to look at this as some sort of stop. I think that's the only way you're going to kind of see any kind of, uh, any kind of setup, which actually it looks all right. Yeah. Let me just uh, clear this, make it a bit clearer. So you've got, what time is it now? All right, I've got, a, got to go soon. So you've got one touch, two touch, three touch, quite accurate, nice, strong move. And then you've got potentially a complex stop punt where the institutions right now, again, this could play out like this, where you've got a lot of buying of the Swiss franc above a market high, right? Because this was previously sold as a um, a bargain for the Swiss franc. Yeah. How do we know that it was a bargain for the Swiss franc? Because prices did that. Yeah. So when prices came back to this area, 
this is going to be this is this is these are prices beyond the bargain right this is beyond cheap how do we know well we don't know all we can do now is basically wait for you know the new zealand dollar to go into a recession for that to be proven but there's definitely a lot of liquidity above this area that's being grabbed a lot of traders going long a lot of transactions being made and then if the recession is confirmed then that is going to be a very very nice trade very nice trade um right let me just go back from some of the um Back through the messages, yeah, not hiking. Eagle says, I think Fed, I think the Fed will hold today and hike in July. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one at the moment. It is tricky, Eagle, because I don't know if you, you you probably might not be in in the room, but we we were talking about inflation measures and to watch out for inflation measures. And the latest inflation measure, which is producer um, producer prices inflation. Uh, came down more than expected so that's the reason why you're seeing uh, the dollar um, you know kind of fall at the moment because any measures of inflation are gonna basically just point to disinflation do you know what I mean inflation coming down which then pretty much means that the Fed are less likely to hike at the moment though at the moment there is a 60 um, or 59 percent now 59 Point one percent chance of a uh, a rate hike, twenty five basis point rate hike. So, it's my um, it's not working. Yeah. Um. So at the moment it is. Yeah. There's still a higher probability, but again, that's data dependent, right? So, if inflation keeps coming down then that's going to come down and if that comes down then the dollar comes down pretty much so yeah that's where we are uh so interesting point yeah it says man dollar is dropping how better save it <laughs> let's see uh the dollar yeah dollars dollar index has gone down yeah see no demand no demand had that ppi been maybe came out as expected yeah, it might have probably held, but yeah, I think the market is just uh, either loading up on dollars or looking to continue to sell those dollars. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with that. The US dollar can be can only be saved by talking yeah at the moment it seems like that right by by the jaw boning um so i think yeah any pullbacks if you're looking to buy the the um the euro dollar then i think on a daily time frame you'd have to wait for prices to come back to that 107s i don't know whether it will but you never know you never know but i still find it strange i, find, I still find it very very strange that although inflation is coming down oh, although inflation is coming down um you know for the us that the market has kind of looked past the technical uh recession in in europe but um but let's see what happens tomorrow because this could be this is where the supply zone is you could have So you could have prices come into this zone here and then Europe come out and pretty much say, oh, do you know what? I am, you know, we are going to, you know, we're thinking about thinking about causing rates the next time. And then all of a sudden that starts to, you know, put a limit on how high the, uh, the euro can go. Right. So there's that. So although the dollar is at the moment got some negative sentiment, you've definitely got to be careful about uh, tomorrow's um, ECB uh, meeting, which may put a cap on this. And if it does, then what you may find in the future is, in fact, prices start to auction between maybe the 108.80s, 109s or something like that. And you may see something like that until, again, something which either pushes 
prices to the upside, you know, some dollar weakness, or actually, in fact, maybe some euro weakness. But it looks like at the moment, I think if I was a betting man, I would probably put my money on more of an auction. More of an auction. Uh, I don't trust ECB either. Exactly, I'm 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 in agreement with you as well, Alexandros. Europe Europe hike with a dovish tone. Yeah, I think that's that is the case because the U.S. economy is still as much as we say you know the cracks is showing and stuff like that. When we look at you know when we look at 